So do you feel stuck with projects? Like you feel you're building them, but you're not really learning or you don't understand what value they bring as you are in the search for a job in cloud. I've been there and I have some advice. All right. So with all that being said, hi, I'm GPS. I do cloud things at Microsoft and here on YouTube. Please take a moment right now to like, comment, and subscribe. And welcome to a new video. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is I feel like a lot of beginners spend way too much time with tutorials. I think tutorials are great because obviously they outline how to accomplish something step by step, but I feel like they're better used when you already have an idea of what you are building or what you need to accomplish. For example, my current project, I'm building a URL shortener and I needed to better understand how to connect a .NET API with a SQL server that I have deployed on my home lab, which is a Synology. So I looked up a tutorial specific to that. Honestly, now I use documentation a lot more than tutorials, but they both have their place. But that is a very specific, very niche thing that I look up. And I think, you know, it plays very well there. And if you're looking for something like that, awesome. But if you're following a tutorial to fully implement a project, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot and you're losing out on the struggle that building a project brings to you, but also the opportunity to really deeply learn new technologies. So for example, if you are someone who built the cloud resume by following someone else's step-by-step -step tutorial, I wouldn't consider that you've learned as much as you could have had you built it on your own, right? So first step is when you want to start a project, try to lean into your own knowledge and your own research as much as possible. So that kind of leads to my second piece of advice, which is, Try to build things that you're actually interested in, you know, to do apps, uh, the, the, the cloud resume, yeah, things like this are pretty generic and there's nothing wrong with that because you do learn the fundamentals and a lot of the basics in that way. And that's awesome. But it's also hard to make a project that you want to keep building and you want to keep improving and you want to speak to with a certain level of like uh, excitement when it's just like something that you are not like very interested in, right? So for example, like I mentioned before, my current project that I'm working on my free time is a URL shortener, right? The, the concept itself is not, it's, it's nothing unique or anything like that. It's something that I haven't built before, but the interesting part for me is I'm deploying it all locally on my home lab, I'm a lot more familiar with deploying things to the cloud and what like a application like this would look like in the cloud. So the challenge for me is like, okay, I need to understand what this would look like. This project looks like running on this uh, local home lab. And it's a lot, a lot to learn, but it's been great. It's, it's been a whole different world for me and it keeps me going. It keeps me very interested in the project and I'm very excited to at some point share it with others, right? And if I were to compare me speaking about this project versus, I don't know, some to-do list that I've made, it would be different, right? Like if you go to an interview and you can talk about a project that you built purely out of something that you're interested in, that's going to stick out and that's going to resonate a little bit more than if you're talking about something more generic, I know coming up with ideas is, it's pretty difficult, right? But this is why I always encourage people to, you know, read more, have your own hobbies, have your own interests, and don't just be obsessed with like upskilling, 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 like tech, 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 like have a personality and kind of reach into your personality and be like, okay, what's something that I, I'm interested in that I could use the cloud to kind of build something and find what that looks like, right? 
my third piece of advice when it comes to, you know, you, you, you know, you want to build a project, right? You have an idea and let's say you're building it is I, I'm a big fan of building complete projects. So this doesn't mean that you have to build something that's in production and is uh, going to be like your side business, your side hustle and making you lots of money. I don't want you to build a SaaS or like the next popular social media app, nothing like that. But I do want you to start thinking in the context of what a production level application could look like, even if it's small. So there's co like, it's like a checklist of things, really. Like you want to make sure like the planning of your project is done somewhere. So you could use something like Jira, Trello, GitHub projects. Uh, maybe you have your own little to-do list or something that you can use, but like plan your project out even before you start building, plan it out in tasks. Maybe you can adro adopt a little bit of like a sprint, a scheduling system or something. I think that would be cool, uh, but that's how it works in real life, right? There's, there's planning before. Once you have your thing built, of course, documentation, like a readme on GitHub, super helpful. And maybe a blog post or video, very helpful as well. You have to have your basic DevOps practices, CICD, well, version control, of course, CICD, infrastructure as code, and some very, very basic monitoring at the minimum. If you can have more, if you have containerization and orchestration, all that, that's not 100% necessary for every single application, but the first four that I mentioned, absolutely, right? Additionally, with the monitoring, you have to make sure you have like alerts and all that stuff configured. Being aware of how much something costs, so cost management, looking into like having budgets set up and, um, you know, looking into maybe like some cost forecasting, just being aware of how much money something costs is super important uh, and being able to find more details about which resources consuming how much stuff like that uh, is pretty important as well. Additionally, security, making sure you're implementing the best security practices for your uh, project is very important as well. So that's what I mean by complete projects. It's not just like, oh, this is, for example, this is my URL shortener and then that's it. Like, no, there are other best practices that I can implement and that I'm going to have to know how to implement when I'm working in production. And there's no better way to kind of get hands on with that kind of stuff than on your own, in your own projects, right? So that's kind of the, the advice I have in this realm. And I find that once you build more complete projects, it makes it easier to know how to improve on them or things that you can implement later, or even incorporating others, uh, like getting collaboration or making it open source, stuff like that. So yeah, just some ideas, uh, but 100% the best way to get skills uh, in this space and the best way to stick out is to make just projects that are interesting uh, and complete, right? So yeah, so let me know uh, what you're going to build in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.